Hello, Namaskar and welcome. Analysis of variance, popularly known as ANOVA. What is ANOVA? We have already studied the say tests of significance of difference between two means for which we use Z-test in case of large samples and T-test in case of small samples or if we consider the western approach when the population standard deviation or variance is known and the sample is large we use Z-test and when in case population standard deviation is not known we use t-test but what about a situation where there are three or more populations and we want we need to say study whether the means of all the populations are equal or not we cannot use z-test or t-test T test irrespective of the fact whether the samples are small or large because in case of these two tests we can analyze up to two means only now the role of ANOVA is useful we can use ANOVA to test for the equality of k number of population means k k is greater than or equal to 3 that means there are at least 3 populations at least 3 means 3 or more populations for a completely randomized experimental design and also using data obtained from an observational study yes yeah we cannot say that we cannot use ANOVA in case of 2 populations and 2 means we can use but looking to the complexity of the statistical procedure we think it is advisable to use Z-test or T-test in case up to two populations and two means but where there are three or more populations and we want to test the equalities of all these three or more population means then we have the only way to use ANOVA we will never know the values of mu1, mu2, mu3 up to mu k as there are k populations and say up to infinite the size can be of the population so we can never calculate the population means then what? but we need to test the following hypothesis yes we cannot oh, sorry we are not in a position to find out the correct values of all the three or more population means but because of our say need we want to test the hypothesis which hypothesis the null hypothesis is mu1 equals to mu2 equals to mu3 equals to up to mu k that means there is no significant difference between all the population means on the other hand the alternative hypothesis will be not all population means are equal yes mind the words not all the population means are equal that means at least two population means have different values yes suppose there are three populations and null hypothesis is mu1 equals to mu2 equals to mu3 but alternative hypothesis remain not all population means are equal that means at least two of these three are different either mu1 and mu2 are not equal or mu1 and mu3 are not equal or mu2 and mu3 are not equal it is not necessary that all the means are different from each other no at least two are not equal that is our alternative hypothesis now there are three or more means so we cannot use z or t test as I have already told, only ANOVA is the way of testing this kind of hypothesis. And now, what is ANOVA exactly? ANOVA is the statistical procedure used to determine whether the observed differences in the K sample means are large enough to reject the null hypothesis. Yes, it is a statistical procedure used to determine whether the observed differences 
in the k sample means are large enough to reject ho yes it is say hard and fast it is not necessary that exactly point to point the means are equal there may be smaller difference but the difference should not be so significant that we have to reject the null hypothesis yes yeah we can use anova under some important assumptions the first is for each population the response variable is normally distributed yes response variable later on we shall discuss on this in detail number 2 the variance of the response variable small sigma square is same for all populations yes all the populations have the same variance yeah and number 3 the observations are independent all the observations yes sample units are independent of each other now okay we know something about anova but how to perform anova that is very important thing and before a few minutes i used the word complex statistical procedure yes it is complex but with the help of some classical reference books and my own some say out of the way thinking we have a very easy comparatively very easy you can say the shortcut for the analysis of variance and with this lecture we are starting discussion on one way classification later on we shall also discuss and solve the problems on two way classification but first one way classification and hence we first need to say a few things about one way classification what is exactly the one way classification what is it when there is only one independent variable that is treatment or characteristic or factor the effect of which is to be studied on the dependent variable what is dependent variable mostly it can be production performance etc then it is called one way classification that means there is only one independent variable the effect of this single independent variable is to be analyzed on the dependent variable or various units of dependent variable more precisely the independent variable will have two or more levels what do you mean by the word levels say same kind of 3 4 5 types of different machines there are two or more machines but the same kind of machines or there are machines and we want to check the say quality of different machines so independent variable is single phenomena machine use of machine and what are the samples units produced by each and every machine so the units of production so production is the dependent variable and independent variable is variety of machines to be used for the same purpose yeah shortcut or easiest method of finding f ratio yeah ultimately it is based on say f test as a test statistic we need to find out the f ratio which we have already discussed in case of the test of hypothesis of two different population variances the same but the steps are totally different because there are three or more populations and hence there are three four or three or more samples so this is a shortcut and i dare to say that this is the easiest way against the way of anova analysis of variance discussed in most of or all the reference books or textbooks yeah the first step is sum of all values there are different populations from which we have um, drawn samples so there are three or more samples and all the samples have either equal or unequal say number of units we need summation of all these values so it is advisable to get the summation of 
each and every sample and the grand total of the summations of all the samples will be the sum of all values that means all the values yeah so t equals to sigma x1 plus sigma x2 plus up to sigma xk that will be our first step number two is sum of squares for all levels yes again the best thing is take samples one by one and find out the squared values of all the unit members of each and every sample and get the summation so now we have sigma x1 square sigma x2 square sigma x3 square and so on up to sigma xk square okay now these two kinds of small tables will be there and summations of all the columns will be there okay then what correction factor what is correction factor t square what is t the answer of our first step divided by capital n what is capital n total number of values or total number of units under analysis or part of data number four total sum of squares popularly known as SST or SSRT etc etc I prefer to call it SST since my study days that is nothing sigma x1 square plus sigma x2 square plus sigma so and so up to sigma xk square that means answer of second step minus correction factor that means answer of third step so SST is nothing it is difference between our second step and third step okay number five sum of squares due to treatments or simply say columns because we are habituated to write the data in columnar form and mostly we don't write the data in row form so column or row anyone is sometimes one way classification the students think that we consider only columnar form that is called one way classification they are not wrong yeah some of squares due to treatments that means columns that is called SSC what is it take the summation from the first step and get it squared see the difference between this one and this one here it is sigma x1 the whole square here it is sigma x1 square here square of each and every individual value is taken and then its summation is taken in this case summation is taken first and then its square value divided by size of the first sample similarly square of the summation of the second sample divided by the size of the second sample and so on ultimately from sums of all these fractions the correction factor according to step number three is subtracted the balance is SSC yeah okay and the last calculation before preparing the ANOVA table is sum of squares due to errors yes sampling fluctuations what is it? it is the greatest shortcut SSE that is difference between these two SST minus SSC so SST is always greater than SSC that is your first checkpoint yeah and all the three are always positive nothing is negative in all these things and the seventh step is preparing ANOVA table that is actually itself is a shortcut all these six steps are shortcuts and ANOVA table itself is a shortcut yeah what is ANOVA table same columns will be prepared every time the first is source of variation and first source of variation is treatment or say column that is SSC degrees of freedom is K minus 1 K means number of populations that means number of samples minus 1 ok now SSC divided by K minus 1 will give us MSC mean sum of squares or mean square the second important thing is SSE yeah say summation of the errors due to fluctuations or sampling fluctuations SSE and for that the degrees of freedom is total number of units total number of units under all the samples minus number of samples and the SSC divided by N minus K gives us MSE summation 
as we know that SSE equals to SST minus SSC, so it should be tallied here. Here, summation of these two degrees of freedom must be n minus 1, total number of units or total number of observations minus 1. This must also be tallied every time. And now, MSC is numerator of RF ratio and MSE is always denominator of RF ratio and F ratio is always one or more. So, in no, say, under no circumstances, MSE can be greater than MSC. MSC is always greater than MSE and then the F ratio. After calculating F ratio, and we have degrees of freedom on the basis of the degrees of freedom of denominator and numerator respectively we can find out the critical values so in this case we shall find out the critical value only after preparing the ANOVA table and now we have critical value as well as calculated value of F ratio we can compare them if the calculated value is greater than the critical value then the null hypothesis is rejected and that means we can conclude that not all populations mean are equal but if the calculated F ratio is less than critical value then we accept the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no significant difference between all the population means. This is say discussion on few important basic points and steps of calculating the F ratio through ANOVA table. Now from the next lecture we are going to start cases or problems on one way classification. That's it. Thank you very much. And yes, if you like this lecture, please don't forget to like the video and also subscribe the channel Prashant Pua, P-R-S-H-N-T-P-U-R-R.